So Monim and I made this uh, presentation for the last year's cohort. Uh, it's about, we named it 10 terrible thoughts you would have during your PhD. Um, and I know that Roy, uh, Roy has probably scared you a lot already and we don't want to add to that. So we will also address why you will be fine anyway, even though you have these thoughts. Uh, but, but it is a very, it's a challenging process. So things come up that that's hard to stand in sometimes, but, but you will be fine. Uh, we promise. Uh, but we will go through this and add, give you some tips on how we survive. Is that yeah. the purpose? Yeah, yeah. I think so. so. I, yeah. I, I'm mostly the cheerleader actually. She'll be <laughs> talking most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. I remember last year we said, okay, so I'll do it this year. You can do it next year. Yeah. But somehow we ended up <laughs> me also doing it this year. Yeah. But that's okay. Okay, so first terrible thought. I know I read something about that. I just don't remember where I read it, when I read it, or exactly what I read. Uh, so the thing is, there's so much input going into the brain over these next few years, and especially now in the beginning. So unless you have a good system for taking notes uh, to, s to summarize what you read, uh, what you hear, what you learn here today, y you're gonna forget it. Uh, so you should already today start having a good system for notes. Uh, actually, you should have started yesterday, but if you do it today, you, you will still be fine. Um, I think a good example of this, it, D Daniel helped me over the weekend to clean my office actually, or throw some trash. <laughs> because the thing is, uh, I was going through my, my general introduction and I had gotten some ro notes from Rote, my supervisor, on, on written paper. And I knew I had it in my office and I couldn't find it. So I went through three years worth of papers uh, I threw out, you know, the largest stack of, of, of papers, horrible for the environment, I realize, uh, only to figure out that the notes were actually at home. Um, at least I have a clean office now, but really a good system for notes, it, it's very much advised. And you will, you will read the same stuff again and again. You will read some stuff now that you will not need in, uh, until a year from now. So if you don't have a good system for notes, it's lost. So a few tips from what I use is that I have an Excel sheet. Um, and in Excel, I have, you know, the reference, the journal, the focus of the paper, the uh, research question, theory, methods, and then I fill it in. I don't do it for every paper I read. I wish I could say I did, but, but whenever I do this, this is very helpful to go back, uh, go back and look at. And it gives a good overview of what you read. But also to get, this is something I do when I actually write a paper. Um, I put it into Envivo, which is actually a qualitative software uh, um, uh, analysis tool. And when I read the paper here, and let's say I come across something about psychic distance, for instance, I mark it, uh, what, what's the word, code it, uh, psychic distance. So then I can go back and I can click psychic distance here. And all I've read about psychic distance from all the different papers comes up in a list. So that's amazing when you write a paper, right? need a section on psychic distance i don't have to you know find one paper here find one here i can just read in an uh, in an vivo so that's a few things i do i don't do you have anything um yeah i i started with the excel in the very beginning but later i have not really maintained it but what i do is i have a lot of folders mm. okay and i have different folders for different topics or different papers that i want to write and when I come across any paper related to one of the topics, I print that, put it in the folder. And <coughs> when I read, I, I read mostly from the folders and I mark important things, uh, highlight mm. with marker. Yeah, that's what I do. And yeah, I, and then I when I'm working, if I forget something or if I need something about one paper or something like that, I just pull the for folder and look at here. Yeah, look at that. And yeah, mm. then I figure it out. I do that too, but the problem is that then I take the papers out of the folder and that everything is a mess. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so the point is, figure out some way yeah, to so do it. Do whatever's best for you. It's not yeah, exactly. no one right way. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> and, and by the way, we, we don't teach one method that you should follow here, but I have been thinking about this myself because this is, this is a m modern way of doing research today. 
Moonim, you are following my model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, probably, w were I the one teaching you this? No, no. No, no, okay. I, I, because I, I also do the same. Or I did the same. But as you roll, it, it, it's really a nightmare today. And and uh, so I I wished I've done something like you are doing, Stina, at some point in time. Because now it's just... No, I'm just writing my PhD student and say, I remember I wrote something about this somewhere <laughs> in some paper, but exactly. I can't remember where. I can't even remember where I wrote it myself. <laughs> so it's not only about where I have read it, it's also where I have written it. Yeah. And stored it. Probably. Yeah. And stored it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I've published it. It's there. I know it's published. I know I have written, I've been thinking about it before, but I don't even know the reference for it. <laughs> My own reference. <laughs> <laughs> Sina? Yeah. The difference between the Excel sheet and the yeah. keyboard. Do, do you just copy paste and have it both places, or? Uh, probably. I Excel and, and Vivo can speak together. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm not very technology advanced, so I haven't figured out exactly how they can speak together. Uh, so I just do it both places. Yeah. I might cut from in Vivo and then put it in Excel, but okay. but the thing is that this provide this provides detail, but. I cannot make it, you know, in an into a nice overview. It might be possible, but I don't know how to do it. But, but That's why I do Excel because this gives an overview of all the papers. Okay, might one note actually be uh, kind of the thing in between the Excel sheet and the uh, folders because they have folders in one. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Maybe one note is uh, something yeah. to check out. People keep mentioning one note to me. I say yes, sounds good, <laughs> and then I never have time to look into it, yeah. but. Uh, but it is worth spending some time finding the you know good approach of yeah. doing it. But and all these tools are available at this website, incl.uel.no, yeah. mm -hmm. where you can go to apps anywhere. You can download and Vivo, you can download EndNote, uh, OneNote, all these kind of software you can download. Yeah. Uh, and for actual paper folders, they're in the equipment room upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you should save it in OneDrive so it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. When you leave your computer in there. Yeah. I don't trust OneDrive. <laughs> <laughs> so I save yeah, it in OneDrive, yeah. in Dropbox. Uh, I print it wherever I can save it. Okay. I save it. Yeah. <laughs> I had a horrible experience of spilling water all over my computer and then logging onto OneDrive only to find that my 30 page COPPA was nowhere to be found. Oh. But yeah. <laughs> but I was able, after one week of drying the computer, I could get it open and have it alive long enough to just move my COPPA into Dropbox. But OneDrive is cloud. Yeah, I know. Saving. Yeah, I know. And it I was in OneDrive. It said it had uploaded, but it hadn't. Okay. Okay. Quick, quick question. Um, so um, in the old days, when you have to um, scan the paper solid sheet, you couldn't control F, you know, find yeah. information. But now with the full filers, most for the most part, you can put everything into a uh, file system. Mm -hmm. You can limit the search, and you can search within all the paper in one search, right? Probably, because that's what I've been doing at least, and and then it kind of you can look for all those keywords, right, in the different papers, mm. uh, in that full filer. So that's kind of a that's a very good thing. Ha half complex yeah. way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The one you're doing is the most advanced. Yeah. Yeah. But you can also use EndNote and these uh, models, yeah. and you can take the abstract into EndNote, and uh, there are so many things you can yeah. do. Yeah. And I am. I cannot teach this because I'm the worst example. <laughs> but Gunvar, Gunvar can do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was thinking about we can organize things with the library here too because we have courses in, in Vivo, for example. We, we have all these packages, we have them available. And you need to learn how to, to do, you need to have your s way of doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and the more consistent you are, the better you yeah. will yeah. be off. Okay. So next thought, what did I actually do today? Or even sometimes, what did, what did I actually do this year? Uh, and there's several reasons why you have this thought. One of them is that a lot of what we do, it doesn't really produce any tangible outcome. Mm. And that can be very frustrating sometimes. Uh, reading, for instance, you know, no words on the page. You just read a few articles. Uh, an analysis, you know, I, in my qualitative paper, I spent four months analyzing the data and what, I, what did I end up with? One <laughs> simple model. <laughs> you know, it's very frustrating. Uh, but the thing is that the more you're frustrated about this, the worse you're off. 
So at least for me, it's better to just accept that this reading, this kind of fumbling around before you figure out or understand what you need to do, it's just part of the process. And the less you're stressed and frustrated about this, the more you advance, I think, and, and more, the more you advance in a better way. Yeah. You agree? And yeah, to, to add something, I think I, I, I spend a lot of time talking with people, you know, I, I talk with everyone. I socialize too much, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder actually what I did. I only talked with people today. That's what I did. You know, but in the end of the day... <laughs> That's such know. bullshit. No one works as much as money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe I, st I, I start... Yeah, I start working after some time, like yeah. after lunch maybe, yeah. Okay. But I, I spend yeah. a lot of time talking. But anyway, but a few things. I, I realized that actually I learned a lot from talking as well. Uh, you know, like... <laughs> I get ideas about new methods, new papers, uh, new subjects. So that kind of helps to some extent uh, to get to get my papers also get going uh, mm. in, for the future. And also, what did I do this year uh, to add what Stina was saying? You know, there is a lag. You know, uh, for first two and a half years, I get I got no publications, actually. And then in the in two thousand eighteen, I got like five. Uh, in, in one year you know so I was working a lot for, for three years but nothing came out so sometimes I was like very frustrated like ah, come on I'm not getting any publications out and some journals took very long in the review process uh, one and a half year then I get a rejection you know after one one and a half year of review I get a rejection and yeah so this process took sometimes very long time so don't get frustrated don't worry too much about it just keep doing your work Okay, yeah, mm. it will appear. So, yeah. So, another reason why it can be hard to get stuff done is that a lot of what we do, it really uh, requires that you come into this flow. It requires that you get, you know, complete immersion into the task. And that's easier said than done. And we found this model which says that you have to, because, you know, the brain never wants to work. It's very challenging for the <laughs> brain to work. The brain wants to get a coffee, talk to a friend, uh, look at the window. It really doesn't want to work. <laughs> but the thing is, you only have to resist this urge of the brain to do other stuff for 15 minutes. If you are able to resist for 15 minutes, then you get into the flow. And that's where the magic happens. That's right. And then, you know, after some time, you take a break so you don't burn yourself out. Um, but the thing is, here, there are some tricks of how to resist. You know, one enemy is social media. Uh, so... I've deleted all social media off my phone. Uh, I have I have them on my iPad at home, but I, I don't want it to follow me to work. Uh, one of the most dangerous things here uh, is actually the email, because email is like a legitimate disturbance, mm -hmm. because it's still work after all. But the problem is that no matter how much work it is, it still you know it disturbs you here. Yeah. It still leads to these 15, 15 minutes being reset. Yeah. Um, so I would close the email. Uh, I always have my phone on do not disturb. No one can ever reach me, but that's fine. Uh, because whenever, whenever you are disturbed here, you know, the clock resets. You have to do another 15 minutes. And you know, a day can go by like that. Um, and the problem is not just that you, you know, can disturb yourself. Other people can disturb you too. Uh, and that kind of takes us to the next point. I want to strangle my colleagues. I've had this thought so many times. It's terrible, but I've had. Because if you're here, if you're somewhere here or almost there, and then someone comes in, ah, if you worked all day on getting this you know, thought that you can finally write out, uh, if you work for a month to be able to write this paragraph, and then you're in it, and then someone comes, ah, it's yes. very annoying. Uh, but. So I think, the, I think the lesson from that is that we have to be respectful towards each other. If you see someone sitting on the headset and really going at it, don't ask, don't ask them anything. Mm. If you can wait until lunch, then do, because then everyone has a break and, and are free to talk about yeah. other stuff. Well, we, we had a nice uh, system actually. All in our cohort, all of us would go to lunch at 12, and mm. then we spend one hour just having lunch and talk. So then we discuss all the other things, you know. Before mm. that, we don't talk much. After that, we don't talk much with each other. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So that, that was nice. 
Yeah, and you know, don't we share offices? Don't have your phone on on. Don't have your phone on. Uh, yeah. on yeah. Sound. Uh, take calls outside of the office. Uh, a, a crucial thing is in the morning. Uh, it's very damaging to be the first person to arrive in the morning, <laughs> because then when every person comes, it's like, oh hi, how are you? <laughs> how was your weekend? And that's very nice. Maybe to do that once, but then the next person comes, yeah. and then the next person, and then suddenly it's lunch, and you haven't done anything, even though you were at the office at seven in the morning. Yeah. So you know, be respectful, be mindful. And and this is from a cultural perspective, this is interesting because in Norway you are respectful, even when you when you don't say good morning. And and in other culture that is really disrespect. But in, in Norway when we see someone are really hard working into something, then it's it's respectful not to say good morning. Mm. <laughs> but in most other con uh, cultures that would be, an, uh, you, you, you would never do that, it would be very irrespectful. Mm. So yeah, that's uh, a, good a point. lot of uh, culture into this. Yeah, that's a very good point. <coughs> okay, another terrible thought that we think, I think we all have sometimes, is, oh, I suck. Everyone is so much better than me. Uh, everyone. Everyone. <laughs> you know, a challenging thing about academia is it that it's very critique based. Mm. Everything is, is mm. you know, you present something, people critique you. You send in a paper, reviewers critique you. You go to a conference, they critique you. Yeah. Your supervisor critiques you, Roy critiques you. Uh, and that can be challenging sometimes. Uh, I, For me, it's important to remember that Okay, it's my paper who gets this critique and whatever they say can help me improve my paper and try to separate me from my work. So it's not me uh, who gets criticized. This critique doesn't mean that I am a bad researcher or that, you know, I'm not good enough at presenting or my English is not good enough, you know, whatever insecurities we have. For me, that helps. But it is a challenge to have this constant critique of everything you do. Do you have any tricks, Munim? Not really, do I? You just think you suck? <laughs> no, yeah, that's what I was thinking, yeah, indeed, 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 yeah. Uh, I still think <laughs> I suck, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it's better now, yeah, I think it's better now. So, yeah, nothing much to say. Actually, but, uh, I, think, I think I know why. Why? I think you, I think, next point here, another thing we think about. When, when will they realize they made a mistake letting me into the program? Yeah. Or when yeah. will they realize I'm not as smart as they think I am? Mm. Uh, it's actually a diagnosis for this, or a syndrome called imposter syndrome, which I think is a very common in academia. Yeah. Uh, and that is that we, we feel like a fraud. Uh, mm. The Drago syndro uh, syndrome is mm. in origin. Mm. Mm. That we feel like, I I've just tricked everyone. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. When will they realize? <laughs> You also feel like that. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. So absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and I was so happy when I found this research about this because you, you, th there is a, most of us have that. Yeah. That uh, in some day, especially when you have been kind of successful, uh, from the seen from the outside, and mm. then some day they will find out how stupid <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, I, I have a lot of that. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I know that there is not much content behind. <laughs> I think me and Munim have yeah, it a lot we too. Have it a lot yeah. too. Yeah. And it's fine to have it a little bit, but it, it it's uh. damaging if it's so much that you that you're hindered by it. Yeah. That you don't you avoid presentations because oh my god, then everyone will see that I'm not as good as they yeah. I should be. Or, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. This is something uh, uh, I think after my first presentation uh, in the lunch seminar, I had this feeling that I'm too bad at presenting, you know. Mm. But then I increased my number of presentation in conferences and in different places. Instead of reducing it, I increased it. Mm -hmm. I, I took a course here mm -hmm. uh, with the English. Uh, we have someone, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yeah. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I took a course like how to present in conferences. I got some good tips from her. So I put effort like mm -hmm. improving yeah. instead of stopping it or reducing it. Mm -hmm. you know, so I think that's uh, one thing that helps. Yeah. And also what, regarding this topic, actually, we talk a lot, mm -hmm. you know, I think this helps. When I feel bad, I talk with Stina, with Stephen, and then we had another good friend, Jan. So we, we discuss a lot when we feel bad. Also, they also do it with me. Mm. And the good thing is when we feel bad and I share it with her, she will say good things to me. <laughs> <laughs> and when she feels bad, 
she tells it to me, I'll say good things to her. Yeah. Yeah. And then we feel good, you know, and this helps. So I think that that's a good way. Like you share with each other when you feel bad, it, it's fine. Yeah. We, we all feel this way and it's it's fine. Yeah. So yeah, I think that could help. Yeah, I also Sharing think that helps a lot. It's very important. And it's important yeah. to for that you for each other make that investment to be that yeah. for each other so that you get it back from the others. Yeah. I think that's made a huge difference for us yeah. Uh, yeah. through this time. <coughs> and now here is a, what can I call it? A, a little tent. I'm, I'm, uh, it's a bit scary to take this next one in front of Paul. We didn't have this last year. Oh. <laughs> Everything would be so much better if my supervisor just <laughs> you know, <laughs> plays something. Uh, another like human, human phenomenon or, or tendency is this bias to always blame external stuff for whatever's going on in our life. It's never all our fault. Yeah. And you know, we tend to, uh, uh, in general in life, we tend to blame our parents for everything, right? Well, during the PhD, you blame your supervisor for everything. Uh, sometimes I also bra blame Roy for some stuff, but it's either supervisor <laughs> or Roy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's never good one at all. With yeah. <laughs> 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 but the, the thing is, which is, which is, which I think we all had to learn kind of the hard way. But the thing is, this is your project. This is your thing. The PhD is your thing. Your supervisor can help you, but but the only person responsible for making stuff happen is you. And the sooner we realize that, the better we are off, I think. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. And you know, if you know, go through the PhD, and you know, you can blame your supervisor all you want. If you come to the end and you're not able to finish or or whatever, okay. So let's say it's your supervisor's fault. You know. The loss is yours. The loss is yours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you have to be at a loss. Yeah. So, so yeah. Take take charge of your project. Uh, be proactive. Yeah. And do stuffs. Okay. Don't just wait for your supervisor uh, to get you along with with the work and with, mm. the, with the ideas of research. But you take charge. Try to do things. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. I and and this is also where it really helps to have friends and you yeah. know good colleagues in the program. I have complained so much about Rotem to Munim. And, and I, I did the same. <laughs> and, and the same the other way around. Yeah, so. uh, and it gives some sort of like release. But then very often later on in the process, I realized that, oh, you yeah, know, maybe Rotem wasn't that wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but still, I get the frustration now yeah, to yeah. you. So this, this is also good. OK. So next point. Ah. This, I very often scream inside my head because it's just so too much to do and how will I be able to finish it and how, how, how will I be able to do all of this? Yeah. It is a lot of work. It is a lot of stress. It, w it will be a lot of baking on you <laughs> if you <laughs> if you're bake when you're, you're stressed. Um, <clears throat> so I think it's important to have a few techniques for how to handle the stress uh, so that you're not too much inflicted by it. Uh, one thing I do is that I, I plan. Even though I know it will never go as planned, for me it helps uh, like a stress relief to, to yeah. plan. So I take everything I need to do, I spread it out in my calendar, and I see, oh, okay, yeah, no, this is doable. If I just do this amount of work every day, then I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And then something will happen, and it won't go as planned, but still, you know, the stress is gone. Uh, and that's what that's so what you want. Some things take much longer than you plan. Mm. Some things take less time. So in a mm. way, you balance in the end anyway. Yeah. So another thing I do is that. Um, stuff that's not directly related to the PhD or research, I save it until the very last minute because it forces me to be super effective when I do it and spend the minimum amount of time uh, on unimportant yeah. stuff. Uh, and I'm not saying this presentation is unimportant, but I can say that Munim and I started preparing it at nine this morning. For today, but For today. last year we did, <laughs> yeah. we did prepare. Yeah. Last year we spent a bit more effort. <laughs> But it's not that we don't want to do a good presentation here, we do, but it, this doesn't really help us in terms of research or PhD or anything. Yeah. So it's important to not spend too much time too much on this time. other stuff. Mm, yeah. Also, all tasks such as these, I normally save them till the end of the day when my brain is fried anyway. So I use the, the good time of the day uh, to do the challenging, yeah. more important stuff. I actually think about papers all the time and everything else I forget. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think you should, should see someone about that. 
Um, another thing is side projects yeah. because they will come up a lot. Uh, even though you're only here for your PhD, a lot of stuff will come up and that's good. Uh, it, it's something that you will need if you want a career in academia to build your CV. But it's very important to not let the side projects derail your PhD or you know hinder the progress of your PhD. Uh, so one thing we talked about was, first of all, don't take on too many side projects yeah. too early. Yeah, maybe, maybe if like one and a half year in the first one and a half year or one year, don't really yeah, get involved in side projects, maybe, I would suggest. Yeah. But and try to make some progress in your PhD when everything is set and you know what you are doing, you have uh, some idea about the data, methods, what you're going to write, then you can get involved in side projects and then it doesn't take much of time. But mm. first years, uh, spend most of the time improving yourself in, in, in writing skills, method skills, and in your topic. Read about it, learn about it, uh, what's going on in the topic. Yeah, I, mm. I would say so. And also learn how to say no. It's extremely important. Uh, everyone means well, they invite you onto this stuff, and it's very nice and it's very exciting. But the thing is, the only one who suffers when you don't deliver your PhD on time because you took on too many things is you. So that you have to remember. You have to be the boss of your own time and your own life. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's very important. And never believe anyone if they tell you it's just a little bit of work. <laughs> never is. <laughs> this is important, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I, I yeah, I, I got involved in some projects where I thought, ah, it's going to take me only one day. I will do the analysis and write it up in one day. But then it took me months, yeah. you know, so <laughs> it happens. In terms of your PhD topic, everything that is, that is interesting to do is already done. I think we thought a lot about this in the beginning. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, do you want to say something about that? Uh, in my experience, so in the beginning when I was studying with the PhD papers, I was like, oh, there's nothing new what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nothing new, but then it, I was trying to get new ideas and it was taking also a lot of time but then what I did I, I just started doing the job you know I, I started reading I started okay I, I will write something about this topic let's let's run let's see what's there read papers and I started also writing a bit here and there but in the end I saw that I wrote up a paper which is really new which was new I mean yeah which is new I would say and all my papers I see in the end are different from existing research uh, there is something interesting, there is something new. But in the beginning, it was so hard for me to say that, okay, how it is different from existing research or what gap I'm filling. But I, I followed this approach that I just mm. started working. I started yeah. writing, I started playing with data, I, I started doing the work. Yeah. But yeah, you can maybe I, add, yeah, add up uh, I think too. we all, I think at least I came into the program thinking that, oh, okay, so I have to find this grand idea. Uh, and you know, if you think you're going to do that, best of luck I uh, I and think one thing you say all the time uh, <coughs> about this grand idea I mean she says it all the time is that you know when we are new even we have a grand idea we can't really recognize that this is a grand idea because we yeah, don't exactly. know much about the about the topic yeah. about the field you know so yeah yeah so that's just it you wouldn't know you, you wouldn't know a grand idea if it hit yeah. you in the face mm -hmm. uh, and I think the, the longer we look for this grand idea, the longer we wait until we actually start working. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. So I think we should, at least for me, it was a good thing to think that, okay, maybe my PhD won't be that great, but it will be okay and I will finish it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that I, I also thought the same way. Yeah. That maybe and I'll that not come up with any, <laughs> anything like totally new, but I will just do something which would be good enough. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is that, that it's, it's not that you then decide that I won't have a great PhD. It just means that you decide to start working yeah. and then your work might still be great but if you don't start Indeed. working you will never have yeah. anything at all yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, okay uh, am i dying <laughs> here is the list of symptoms that munim and i have had <laughs> throughout this period uh, so chronic headache uh, sleeping trouble breathing trouble chest pressure weight loss and gain Depressive moods, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, uh, tendonitis. Yeah. That's it. Probably Maybe more. more. <laughs> Probably more. Yeah. Yeah. It's 
it's we're not saying this to scare you we're saying this to remember to take care of yourselves like go for walks stretch a little bit uh, you know we have a great gym here at Spikolan. you can go there for 300 a month and um, the thing is even though you just sit it's very hard for the body uh, and when you don't take care of yourself you start to feel pain and the pain inflict inflicts on your work and then you know you're yeah. worse off so this is an important point yeah yeah this is very important yeah because i haven't taken care of I haven't taken much care of myself, so I no. cannot maybe add too much, but no. you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I did. I also had all yeah, these things, true. but I regret it not yeah, paying I, I, more. I, yeah, I yeah. Uh, also had all these things. Yeah, yeah, indeed. How can my own family not know what I do? You know, I normally say my brother, when people ask him what I'm doing, he says, uh, I don't know. <laughs> because he doesn't. Uh, and I think this is the case for a lot of people, like Munim's parents. Yeah. Even though he defended, defended and now got a big job as an associate professor, they still call him a student. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Yeah. yeah sometimes, yeah. Uh, they, they, yeah they, they still have this feeling that I'm going to university, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma tells everyone that uh, I had to go back to school because I couldn't get a job. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. <laughs> Uh, the point we're trying to make here is that, okay, so your family and friends, they might not get what you're doing. If you have other academics in your family, you're very lucky uh, or maybe unlucky. I don't know. But the thing is that this is where it's important that you are there for each other and that you are a support system for each other because you might not always get this understanding of what you're doing at home. Uh, but here you can, if you invest in it, if you, you know, show up for your colleagues so that they show up for you if you invite each other for dinner if you go out and do something together invest in also the social component and create a, a collegial atmosphere yeah. i think is very important that's very important yeah and you will see some pictures yes so we included some pictures of some things we did <coughs> here we're celebrating ingrid's birthday yeah. i think yeah mm -hmm. so these are basically most of us that started out together um here we have Christmas party. We did sec Secret Santa and had pizza. This is just a night going out, some of us, in my apartment. This is 17th of May. We all celebrated together. Oh, that's right. I was taking the picture, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> Muni was also there. 17th of May is a big, big day. In yeah, it's the uh, Independence Day or National Day of Norway. Um, this is last year's Christmas party. We ha I made Pinniket for the first oh, and really? so far only time in my life <laughs> well, I made Pinniket. <laughs> yes, and Stephen and Kwame, they don't drink, but we, we could make them believe that this was for digestion, <laughs> and that it was fine to take an Akavit. <laughs> but this is all part of the Norwegian experience. Uh, and this was a going away party for Stephen and Kwame, I think, the first yeah, time they yeah, left. Yeah, the, the, the first time they were going back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this, I think, this made a big difference. You know, we are very lucky to be in a cohort. Uh, normally, PhD is described as a lonely journey, yeah. uh, but I've never felt lonely because yeah, I've yeah. always had this support system. But if I didn't invest in it and contribute yeah. to it myself, I wouldn't have had that. That's right. Indeed. So that's extremely important. I cannot emphasize that enough. <coughs> and finally, I'm sure Roy maybe said this already, a good PhD is a finished PhD. So, you know, we are in training after all. This is a, a researcher training, researcher education. Yeah. So maybe you will do, you know, the best, it's sad if the best work you do in your life is the PhD. The best work is supposed to come later, right? When you've learned all the skills and tools you need to become a good researcher. So get started, do the work, and then you will be able to finish yeah. and be a good researcher. Take yeah, care. that's it. But uh, yeah, I'll just add two more points. So, so one of it is uh, I followed Roy actually in, in our very first kickoff. Roy said one thing that don't just do a PhD, but build a career. You know, I think that's very yeah. important. Uh, maybe you have said it again. I don't know, but I think that's very important. You know, like uh, not only writing papers for the PhD, but to get involved a bit in teaching, a bit in supervising uh, master students or bachelor students. 
and also building contacts when you go to conference uh, try to talk with other professors in your in your field okay these things will help you a lot yeah. in in later time to get a job hmm. uh, i guess yeah. that's very true but it's also important to keep the balance there because yeah, the finished yeah. phd it's the gateway to everything so yes. you have to finish that but if you only yeah. have the phd then yeah, you're not very competitive yeah, exactly so, but so you, you have, have to, to balance, you have to balance it. a bit yeah of course one more point mm -hmm. yeah just came up in my mind um it's also from another professor uh, in C's course we had a professor in skype yeah I, I don't jeff, Colvin. jeff Co yeah he said one thing that that also i picked that do it the hard way don't take any shortcuts mm -hmm. okay you know if you take a shortcut to save one hour you have to spend maybe 20 hours later for that Mm. So if you have to read something, read in detail. If you have to learn something, learn in detail. You know, so that it doesn't get back to you after some time again. Mm. Okay, yeah. These are yeah. the points I wanted to make. That's very true. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Thank That's you. It. Yeah. yeah.